Hey, in this video, I will blow your mind. The last one and a half years, I worked on something truly amazing. Let me show it to you. So if I click on this button, I can open up such a chat window and let me select a blueprint. I want to select new blueprint four. And as you can see, this is completely empty, okay? There's nothing here, nothing in the construction script, nothing in the event graph, no variables, nothing, okay? So uh, let me select the blueprint and let me type in here, create a function that generates a random password. I want to have an input to set the length uh, and two other inputs that define whether to use numbers and symbols. All right, uh, let's, I press enter and let's see what happens. So as you can see, it is thinking. So let's wait a couple of seconds and it is done. That was like three seconds or something. Uh, Here's a button, navigate to function. If I were to click on this, the engine would crash, so I would, I will go manually in my blueprint. But, but one thing you notice is that we have unsafe changes. So let's go into this. And as you can see, we have a new function here, generate random password. And let's close the chat for now. And let's, uh, before we open this, let's just test it out. So. Uh, on event begin play, I want to generate a password. Let's uh, length. Let's set the length to ten. Let's set a print string. Uh, let's combine this and let's set the duration to fifty or something. Compile and save. And we also need to move one of those into the level. And let's hit play. And you can see it generated a random password or a code or something. And let us now include numbers and check uh, see if that also works. So. Here are no numbers, there we have some numbers and there we also have some numbers. And let's check special characters. We have a dollar sign, we have hashtag and person sign and it works. And we could also remove those again. And let us now check the code, what it generated. And there are two things you notice straight away. We fr first have these weird comments, you can delete those. These are just for debugging purposes. And the second thing you notice is that this is a complete mess. So I obviously need to improve the node formatting, aka the arrangement, so the generated nodes look better. For now I will use a third party plugin to format the graph. So as you can see I have this format graph button here, I selected all my nodes and then I click on this and let's compile and save this stuff and let's go through this code. So DAI generated this stuff and it decides to add some local variables. Uh, the alphabet, the numbers and special characters. Then it sets a local uh, variable of combined chars to be the alphabet. And then when include numbers is true, we combine the numbers we just declared here uh, and add this to the combined chars. And we do the same for special characters. Um, and then for for loop, uh, it loops through the length we want, so we have one, two, three, four, five, and the amount of times that we input it, and then it gets a random integer in range, and you see something right here. Um, here it, for example, uses vectors instead of integers, so we could replace this with just minus one. And do this and remove this whole thing. So you see it doesn't always generate 100% perfect code, but it generated code that is usable. This is especially great for fast progress and new ideas, for example. And I'm also constantly working on refining what the AI generates. So in the future, this will be perfectly clean code and it would choose this uh, directly and you don't have to remove anything. Let's go on with the code. Uh, we then get the uh, combined chars, get the uh, character array, get the index that we, the random integer that we just created, um, and get our current password. Set append our current password with this new symbol and set the password. And we do this like eight times, and then we return the password. So this is perfect code except for this little thing but this also worked but this way it is cleaner and again i am constantly refining this so this is something i'm currently working on so 
it generates better code and not something with vectors when it doesn't need to be vectors. All right, now I want to create a function that is more complex. So let's select our blueprint again. Uh, let's select the chat. And for this one, just take a look at the content browser, okay? Um, so uh, let me type in, I want a function um, with a, uh, a struct and an enum. Um, it should have a useful purpose. Um, so click on send and let's wait a couple of seconds again. And it is finished. And you saw the moment the uh, button appeared, a new folder got created and our um, blueprint has now unsaved changes again. So uh, let's check this folder. Because yes, this AI can also create custom assets which it needs for the functions. So for example, enums and structs, as you can see here. So let's go into our blueprint, compile and save this one. And let's check the new function. And as you can see, this is a mess again. So let me format this stuff once again. And uh, let's close this thing and let's check the code. So we first uh, set a local variable of our custom struct type. And we also have a custom enum input. Um, and then we just do some stats changing, it seems like. So we are just changing some stats based on the enum we inputted. So this has a useful purpose and the AI did a great job. Uh, one thing you see, it uses make and break structs, uh, break and make structs. Uh, it could instead just use uh, the set member and struct node. This would be a little bit more cleaner, but uh, this I may refine that later. This also is perfectly fine code. So. This AI can generate anything imaginable. There are no limitations I'm aware of and everything a human can code in blueprints, this AI also should be able to create. It even can create fully functional actors with blueprint code in it, but that is not good enough to show yet. In one of my last videos, I showed you 100 mind blowing tips and since then people called me insane. So let me go even further and blow your mind once again. This entire thing was made 99% in pure blueprints and about 1% in C++. So let's check that out. I of course need to blur a bunch of things because I don't want to show the full source code yet. So I also won't move the graph for now, uh, but let me move it now and I will do a cut and then you see other parts of this graph and you see this is a complete mess, but it works, so I don't care. And you see all these functions are getting called. Here's a function getting called. Here's a function getting called. So let's us just go into, into this function and I will do a cut again, so it's easy for me to blur things. And this is the function uh, that I just clicked on. As you can see, this is equally as complex. And this function also has some uh, another function, this one. So let me also open this. And as you can see, the sub function is completely complex also. Here's another part of it. And I again need to blur something. So all right, that was a bunch of things I had to blur. But I hope you get the gist that this thing is extremely complex. And this was only a small part of the entire blueprint code. Uh, it's ironic because now you can generate blueprint code with blueprints. I'm currently translating this entire thing to C++ though for that extra bit of performance and to be able to compile this as a p code plugin without content. Uh, but this is pretty easy to do and shouldn't take me very long. Let's try out another function. Uh, let me open the window again, the chat window, and let me select blueprint 4. And this time um, I will write generate me a useful function for a game. So let's see what this does. Um, it is thinking. <coughs> and we have the navigate to function button again, but let me just open the blueprint and let me close the chat window again. And you see we have a calculate calculate damage at distance function. Let's remove the debug comments again and let me format this whole thing. And let's also check out this code real fast. So uh, in this code, we calculate damage at a distance. So we get the source location and a target location. We get the distance from that with the base damage and the maximum range. Um, and as you can see again, this uses vectors again, 
this will work but it isn't very clean uh, but I will fix this as I already told you. I could try this function but I don't want to make this video any longer. I have some important things left to say. So in this exact moment it can only generate blueprint code and for that it can also create assets like structs and enums as you saw. Let me tell you that this system is just the peak of the iceberg and it can do even more useful things. I don't feel confident in sharing those yet but I will showcase more features in another video. The next step will be that it also can understand your current blueprint code and optimize it or make changes based on your prompt. I envision this to be an extremely useful tool in the future with all the ideas I have for it and it will definitely make your development time easier. Theoretically I could release it right now but there are still some things I want to fine tune. So if you are interested in this make sure to go to the first link in the description and join the discord server for free. This way you don't miss any news. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and join my discord to share your ideas or discuss this. I don't have a name for this whole project yet, let me know if you have a good name idea on my discord. Alright, this project just further proves that you can do nearly anything imaginable in blueprints and don't need to learn C++. It definitely is the most insane thing I have ever done and this is by far the biggest project yet. I hope you have a great rest of the day, see ya.